All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days. When we last heard from our friends on the strange island off the coast of Brazil, where the good ship Paul Parrot has been wrecked in a hurricane, Indians had just attacked the camp of the Paul Parrot's crew and carried off Annabelle Wilson, the young lady who was betrothed to Bruno Karsh, the privateer. Meanwhile, it was Misto, in company with Briney, Karsh's hook-handed first mate, who led the Indians in the attack on the camp. What Misto and Briney do not know, however, is that Karsh and Captain Dalton, whom they've tied up in a hut at the Indians' camp, have both escaped. Karsh freeing himself, apparently meeting a horrible fate at the claws of the Black Leopard, and Dalton having been liberated by our young friends Johnny Robbins and Sue Grange, along with old Peg Lake Dickon. As we join them now, it's almost dark, and Johnny and Sue, with Captain Dalton and Dickon and the ever-present Paul Parrot himself, are heading back to the Paul Parrot camp through the jungle. Ah! Over, me hearties! We better hurry. I don't think I'd like to be in the jungle ever. It gets pitch dark. Don't worry, Sue. We'll be back at the beach in just a minute. Aye, the Paul Parrot camp lies just ahead. Again, Sue and Johnny. I want to tell you that you've saved my life so many times, I know I'll always be in your debt. Aw, oh, gee, Captain Dalton. You know if it hadn't been for you, none of us would still be alive. <laughs> Besides, we were really lucky today. There didn't seem to be anyone around the Indian's village. So when the Black Leopard went after Karsh, it was easy to rescue you. Bless me to a yard on, Captain. I've been worrying about that, I have. What made that village so deserted? Them blooming savages must have been up to mischief somewhere. I don't think that concerns us, Dickon. All we have to do now that we know just what we're up against is build an armed camp on the beach to ward off the savages and that mad white man, Misto, whoever he is, if they ever attack us. Ah! Break his head! Break his head! Ah. Break his head it is, Pa, you old pelican. It's the shore, and we're back to our camp. Captain, it seems awfully quiet. And look, there's smoke coming up from some of our cabins. Oh, Johnny, we'd better find my brother Ezra. I'm so afraid something has happened. I don't like the looks of this. Let's hurry. Here, here, here's Mr. Granger's cabin here, Captain. Aye. The blooming door's open. And listen. It's Mr. Grange, and he's in trouble. Ezra... Ezra, are you all right? Oh, Sue, thank heaven you're safe. I'm all right, I guess. Got knocked about a good deal by those savages. He's all tied up with vine ropes the Indian Jews. Let me help. Quick, Mr. Grange. What happened? Thank goodness you turned up, Captain Dalton. We really need you now. The Indians, led by some renegade white man, overpowered the camp and then took Miss Wilson with him. That was Misto. He's raided the camp. I'm a blooming barnacle. That's why the Indian village was so deserted. But Annabelle... You say he took her? Blow me down. That's foul play for fair. Ah, foul play, foul play. Ah. Captain Dalton, I just happened to think, if Misto was here, Briney must have been with him. Aye, lad, but what of that? Briney knew we had diamonds aboard the ship. He may have found them. Blow me down, that's right. I'll run and look in your cabin on the ship, Captain. I know where you hid the diamonds. Blow me down. I'll always thank of myself and see how Nicholson and what's left of the crew made out in the fighter, will? Ah, all hands on deck. Ah. Oh, Israel. Are you really all right? Don't worry now, Sue. Just a few bruises. Do you expect the men of the crew back soon, Mr. Grange? Any moment, Captain. It was just bad luck that they hadn't returned when the raid came. As it is, you just missed walking into the fight yourselves. Mm, there's only one thing to do, as I can see. As soon as all our men return from their searching parties, they go in a body and attack the Indian camp. Blow me down. We'll settle this for good and all. I've never been one for open battle, Captain, but I agree. I can see no other way. I'll leave everything up to you, Mr. Grange. Meanwhile, I'm going ahead to the savage camp. Miss Wilson may be in grave danger. Captain Dalton, you can't go through those jungles when it's almost dark alone. We need you to lead them in. Dickon knows the way. He can lead you. We can't tell how long it may be until our crew is ready to attack. And meanwhile, we can't let anything happen to Miss Wilson at the hands of that madman and his savages. Captain Dalton... The diamonds, they're gone. Oh, oh, that means that awful briny found them on the ship. That settles it. Blow me down. Now we know we must attack. And I am leaving now. Oh, Captain Dalton, let me go with you. I know the shortest way to the Indian village. No, it's too dangerous, lad. I'm going alone. Oh, please take us. We know the way better than anybody. Mm, it's true, you do. Aye, then I'll take you. But keep this in mind. One sign of trouble and you're to leave. Aye, aye, Captain. We're under your command. Spoken like a true seaman, Johnny. Avast, Mr. Grange. We're on our way. Gather the men and follow as soon as you can. I still hate to see you and the children leaving alone, but you know best. 
But may heaven be with you. And be careful. I wish the men were ready to go with you. Captain, Captain, look. Right ahead, you can see the lights of the Indian campfire through the trees. Hi, Johnny. So you can. Keep behind me, Sue. Don't worry, Captain. I'll be careful. I'll be as quiet as a mouse. Ah! Quiet as a mouse! Blow me down. That's Paul Parrott's voice. Where did he come from? Stow that noise, you empty-headed canary. You want us to lose our blooming scalps? Why, it's Dickon. He's coming up behind us. But Dickon, where are the rest of the men? They'll be along directly. Wainwright and some of the men also found the Indian village this afternoon. And they know the way they do. Blow me down, Dickon. You've disobeyed orders. I said you were to direct the men here while I went ahead to see what happened to Miss Wilson. Well, sir, I I know it weren't being a dutiful seaman, but, well... Well, blast it, Captain. Every time you get out of old Dickon's sight, something happens to you. And when I heard you'd gone back into the woods with just the two young'uns, I swore I wouldn't let you go without me. Dickon, you're an irresponsible old salt what thinks he knows more than his skipper. <laughs> But I can't help liking you for thinking so much of me. Blow me down, Skipper. We're together again. I... All four of us. And they ain't a blooming tribe of savages on earth. What can Nick this crew are for? That's right, Dickon. We're always strong when we're together. And we'll always be lucky together. Oh, look, Captain Dalton. Hmm? There's the savages' camp. And that man, Misto. He's bringing out two big cages before the campfires. And that briny with the awful hook hand is with him. Yeah, the Indians are all gathering around. What's he up to? Oh, he's getting ready to show some of his magic tricks to him. You may lay to that. Aye, Captain. You're right. Now watch him. Watch him. Pull, bubble up. Pull, bubble up. Now, my good friend, Briney, I'm about to put on a little show to impress the natives. You know I got control of them through my sleight of hand. And to keep them thinking I'm superhuman... I have to keep up the show. Blimey, where did you get the two blinking cages? Made them here on the island in my spare time. It's always been my best trick, you know. Changing the man into the leopard's cage and the leopard into the man's. Help me. It's the same blooming trick you got run out of Singapore for bungling. The time you changed the leopard, but not the man. The very one. Although I still say the word bungle is inappropriate since I knew what I was doing. Oh, by the way, Branny, wouldn't you like to help me out in this trick? I'd like you to be the man who changes places with the leopard. Uh, oh, me? And let you get the trick mixed up again now that I got the Paul Parrot's diamonds? <laughs> Never you mind now, mister. None of that. None of that. <laughs> Why, Briney, one would think you didn't trust me. Very well, I'll have to get another subject. Ah, I have it. The young lady we took from the Paul Parrot's camp. She's standing behind the tree over there. The one you took, you mean? I told you she'd bring bad luck. Now what have you got in your devilish mind? I'll use her for the trick, my superstitious friend. Ah, the young lady. Come out from behind the tree and I'll free your arms. Now, don't shrink away, my dear. You shall not be hurt. What are you going to do? You're about to help me impress the savages with a bit of my magic. You will get into that cage. When I throw my robe over the cage, a trap door will open in the floor. You run through the passageway, open the trap door at the end of the passage, and you'll find yourself in another cage. Simple, isn't it? And if I refuse? Then you will shortly find a large and unfriendly black leopard in the same cage with you. This one, in fact. Speak to the lady, Blackie. I'd feel safer with a leopard than with you. Uh, one moment. Here comes one of my Indian guards running this way. He looks as if he has news. Yes? Uga. What? Why, that's impossible. Uga. What's all this gibberish about? He says he's just been to the hut where Karsh and Dalton were kept prisoners, and they're both gone. Blimey. This means trouble. I told you the blooming woman would bring bad luck. Shut up with that nonsense. Those men have got to be found, especially Dalton. Uda. Una so. He's pointing to the bushes at the end of the clearing. Oh, I see. There's someone lurking there. Ah! After the blinking savages! Ah! Hark! Ah! Hark! It's that blooming parrot. That means it's someone from the whaler's crew. That settles it. We'll take care of them. Oh, go. Bo! Blast your bald parrot. You've given us away with you, blooming squawking. The best! We've got to run for it. Run ahead, Johnny and Sue. Try and find a place to hide, and don't let them catch you. 
Dickon and I are armed, and if worst comes to worst, we can fight it out. But Captain, we couldn't leave you now. Blast it, you young'uns. You'll do as the captain says. Or... Oh. Dickon! Oh. Dickon, what's the matter? Dickon! Oh, Johnny, look! There's an arrow in his shoulder. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. They can't hurt a tough piece of old shark skin like me. Now, you you put on full sail and go. I'll make out. Dickon, go. Dickon, are you hurt bad? Captain Dalton, remember Bruno Carr said they looked like Brazilian Indians. Right. Isn't it the Brazilian Indians who use poison arrows? Oh, so it is, lad. Dickon, I told you you shouldn't have followed. But now that you came to help me, I'll protect you with my last breath. Steady, old shipmate, steady. Johnny, Sue, behind that pile of rocks over there. Drag Dickon with oh, you. I can... I can fight, and I'm I'm armed, Captain. They're coming closer. Closer. Avast, we're in for the most one-sided fight any seaman was ever called on to face. Now what's going to happen to our friends? Is the arrow in Dickens' shoulder really poisoned? And if it is, what's going to happen to Dickon? Will Captain Dalton be able to hold off the savages? Will Johnny and Sue get away? What of Annabelle Wilson and the Black Leopard? Will the crew of the Paul Parrot find the Indian village in time to be of any help? Be sure to listen for the next transcribed adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot to find out. Until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye. <laughs>